Wild One at Six Flags America is a shockingly good roller coaster. This wooden coaster is over 100 years old, and I have to give Six Flags credit. They have this coaster running like a dream. And I admittedly have a soft spot for this coaster because of its historical importance and connection with my hometown. Wild One originally opened in 1917 as the Giant Coaster at Paragon Park in Hull, Massachusetts. Designed by John Miller and built alongside Nantasket Beach, the Giant Coaster opened as the world's tallest roller coaster, standing 98 feet tall or 30 meters tall. While the coaster was incredibly popular, it unfortunately was the victim of multiple fires. In 1932, Herbert Schmeck redesigned much of the ride after it was partially destroyed by a fire. Then, in 1963, another fire destroyed the station, trains, Helix Finale, and part of the lift hill. Paragon Park asked John Allen to redesign the coaster as it had been, but this was too expensive for the Boardwalk Park. Therefore, Allen proposed a cheaper alternative that eliminated the final two bunny hills and Helix Finale, which is what the park chose to do. One other odd thing about the Giant Coaster is that for the final two decades, it operated with the former trains from St. Louis's Forest Park Highlands as Comet. That in itself isn't weird. What is weird is the fact that the park neglected to paint over the old Comet logo on the front of the train, despite still being known as the Giant Coaster. The Giant Coaster operated until 1984 when Paragon Park closed. Unfortunately, the land the park sat on became too valuable and it was converted into a condominium development. I grew up going to Nantasket Beach, and it's painful for me to think that this coaster used to run alongside the strip. All that remains of Paragon Park today is the old clock tower and the classic carousel. While 1984 was the end of Paragon Park, it thankfully wasn't the end of the giant coaster. Around that same time, Wild World in Upper Marlboro, Maryland was in the process of being converted from a wildlife preserve into a full-fledged amusement park. The owners wanted a signature wooden roller coaster to put them on the map but a brand new coaster was too costly for the small park. In 1985, Knoebel successfully relocated Playlands Park's rocket and reopened the coaster as Phoenix. Phoenix opened to acclaimed reviews and Knoebel's received a signature attraction for a bargain price. Wild World was inspired by this and they immediately started looking into other relocation candidates, and they found a prime one in Paragon Park's giant coaster. So in 1985, Wild World purchased Giant Coaster for just $26,000. It is thought that very little of the ride's structure was actually salvageable. But what Wild World got were the trains, motor, lift chain, and most importantly, the original blueprints. The Din Corporation oversaw the transportation and reconstruction of the Giant Coaster, and in 1986, this classic coaster reopened as the Wild One, and the ride was restored to its former glory. The final Bunny Hills and Helix were re-added. The train was also increased from three cars to four cars. With the added weight, this caused Wild One to run even faster than it ever did at Paragon Park. This increased the power of the ride's airtime and the coaster opened a much fanfare. But that's not the end of the modifications that Wild One underwent. Sometime between the park being rebranded as Adventure World in 1994, the first drop and second hill were reprofiled on Wild One. The first drop was raised and the pullout was made more gradual. From early reports, it sounded like some riders found the tight pullout uncomfortable. At the same time, the second hill was shortened. At its original height, this hill had a trim break. Once the hill was shortened, this trim was removed so the net speed through the remainder of the course was unchanged. One of the other major modifications was the removal of the speed hill before the turnaround and the reprofiling of the turnaround itself. I long heard this modification coincide with the opening of the Skull Mountain Water Ride in 1997, but as you can see during this 1997 Cyclone Steve POV I'm showing, the Speed Hill and original turnaround were still present even with Skull Mountain there. I believe this change happened in 1999 when Adventure World was flagged and rebranded as Six Flags America. Six Flags was notorious in the late 1990s and early 2000s for reprofiling their wooden coasters. The speed hill before the turnaround looked downright wicked. Because of how quickly you flew over it, combined with how it was twisted, I suspect this hill would have delivered an incredible combination of laterals and airtime. It looked like a more intense version of the speed hill Wild One still has today, but more on that later. When the speed hill was removed, it transformed the entrance into the turnaround into a more gradual double up. The exit of this turnaround was also adjusted. Originally the turnaround had a swooping drop as the first part of the double down. 
Those who experienced it said the laterals were insane. Now, the turnaround is flat, and the double down consists of two straight drops, which has neutered laterals. The third modification was the removal of the buzz bars and replacement with individual ratcheting lap bars. Again, I couldn't find a definitive year when this occurred, but I also suspect this occurred around the time Six Flags rebranded the park. But if you know for sure, I'd love to know. Thankfully, despite these modifications, Wild One is still running extremely well. In general, Six Flags is not known for wood coaster maintenance, but they take incredibly good care of Wild One. Almost none of the original track remains, as Six Flags has been very proactive replacing sections of the ride. The ride still runs fast and up front, the ride is remarkably smooth. In the back or on a wheel seat, the ride can be bumpy in the valleys, but there are far rougher wooden coasters out there. Heck, just look at the other Woody in the same park and roar. In terms of seat selection, I much prefer the front and wild one. Not only is it smoother, but the airtime is stronger up there. The one advantage of the back is that the laterals are stronger. Wild One begins with a 98 foot tall lift and an 88 foot tall drop. Unlike most Woodies, especially for ones built in 1917, this drop is not straight. Wild One's drop curves to the right at the top. While this drop unfortunately does not offer any airtime, the unbanked turn at the start of the drop gives some great laterals if you're towards the back. The second hill gives strong floater airtime up front. The resulting drop gives decent floater airtime towards the back, and then you fly through the remnants of Skull Mountain. Since Six Flags was too lazy to remove the old log flume's drop, this tunnel has a wicked head chopper. That leads into the turnaround, which begins with a double up. The first half of the double up gives a strong pop of airtime up front. This hill also has a subtle twist to the left, so it offers some mild laterals throughout the train. The second part of the double up gives only a weak pop of airtime up front. In general, Wild One feels very fast, but this flat turnaround is the one slow spot in the ride because of how high it is relative to the rest of the layout. If you're towards the back, you do start getting some mild laterals at the end of the turnaround as the front half of the train starts down the double down. If you're up front, you get no airtime in this double down, but if you're in the back, you get two small pops of airtime. That's followed by the most intense element on the ride, the twisted speed hill. This hill is downright violent in the best way possible. This hill also charges through the remains of Skull Mountain, so it has an equally awesome head chopper as the pull-up from the second drop. But more importantly, this unbanked twist atop the speed hill results in some abrupt and powerful laterals. Some may find this moment uncomfortable, but I loved how wild it was. This coaster is called the wild one after all. And if you're up front, this speed hill also delivers a very strong pop of airtime as you're experiencing those laterals. If you're towards the back, you don't really get any airtime in this element, just those crushing laterals. Seeing how awesome the speed hill is made it all the more painful to know that the other one was removed in the 1999 modification. That's followed by a sizable camelback and you haul over this hill. This results in the strongest airtime on the ride. Up front, you get a strong pop of ejector airtime. Towards the back, you get the most sustained airtime on the ride, and it was more of the flejector variety. Wild One then rises up into the structure and banks to the left. Up front, this hill delivers another abrupt and powerful pop of ejector airtime. Towards the back, this hill offers no airtime, but the bank drop offers some excellent laterals. That's followed by this really drawn out bunny hill that doesn't offer any airtime, in the traditional sense. Rather, this hill bounces you about. While I would have preferred traditional airtime, the imperfections of the track gave this otherwise dull section character. You then rise up into the final helix. And if you're up front, you get a weak pop of airtime, the last airtime moment on the ride. You then run over a trim brake that does slow you down a little bit, but the 540 degree helix afterwards still delivers some great sustained laterals. You then rise up into the brake run, and you can still hear the upstop wheels spinning from all the airtime you just experienced. So what would I rate Wild One? I would give this coaster an 8 out of 10. This coaster rides far better than you'd expect for a 100 plus year old coaster at a Six Flags Park. Wild One holds its speed well and it offers a wonderful combination of airtime and laterals throughout its course. While it doesn't quite make my top 25 wood coaster list, it's not too far behind. I really wish this coaster was still operating at Paragon Park since it would have been a real treat to grow up mints from this coaster. 
but I'm just thankful this coaster still exists and it's running in top-notch form. So those are my thoughts on Wild One at Six Flags America. What are your thoughts on this classic coaster? I'd love to hear what you think down below in the comments, especially if you rode it at Paragon Park or before the 1990s modifications. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.